Earlier in the show, we brought you the story of Kleinpeter Farms Dairy's act of charity to our competitor, Smith Creamery, in their time of need. Joining us now is Neil Malasson with this week's Bottom Line. And Neil, I know that you were there in 2002 when Smith Creamery first opened its doors, and I know you're happy to see they're back in stores. I am happy about it, Avery, but I'm not surprised, and I'll tell you why here in a minute. First, I want to say that what makes me the most happy about this is the effort being made to reverse the fortunes of the dairy industry, which has suffered for decades now. Constant low prices or high overhead costs, as well as setbacks like the explosion at the Smith Creamery or the mastitis that killed heifers in the wake of Hurricane Katrina have plagued the industry for years. When news like this comes around, it's a reminder that there's still people out there fighting to maintain this way of life that is not only critical for dairy farmers, but for consumers as well. Back when I first covered the opening of Smith Creamery, it was amazing to see a new creamery opening up at a time when many dairies were shutting down. Warren Smith was hopeful and positive about his new endeavor, providing the milk, cheese and ice cream products that we all love. With its pasteurized but not homogenized milk, it gave consumers a taste of what it's like to live on the farm, milk that still has that creamy taste fresh from the cow. Like Jeff Klein Peter said earlier, I was heartbroken to hear about the explosion that destroyed the Smith family's facilities. I talked with Warren Smith later on in the morning of the explosion and he was both upset and unsure of what the future would be for his once hopeful endeavor. So when the Klein Peters stepped in, it's the renewal of hope and now not only will they be back in their original stores, but in 34 Rouses in South Louisiana as well. As I said though, I'm not surprised and here's why. This act of generosity is part and parcel of the rural lifestyle. Looking out for neighbors, lending a helping hand and going that extra mile work just as well business to business as they do person to person. The bottom line is, if we lose dairying, if we lose the rural farming lifestyle, not only do we have to pay higher prices to bring those fresh farm products from afar, but we lose a basic humanity that shines best even when circumstances are worst. And what's more, Avery, I've missed their chocolate milk, and although my waistline certainly hasn't. Oh, your waistline's going to pay soon enough. I talked to Jeff Kleinpeter, and he says he's working on the formula. It'll be in store soon. Thanks a lot, Neil Malasson. And remember, if you want to hear more from Neil, you can listen to his daily reports on the Louisiana Farm Bureau Radio Network for a list of stations, or to listen to Neil's reports online, you can click over to our website, twilatv.org, and look for the link called LFB Radio Network on the left side of the homepage. Well, that does it for this edition of Twyla. Join us next week when we take you to New Orleans, where growing interest in agriculture is the goal of a week-long conference. Until then, you can watch any of our stories online on our website, twilatv.org. For all of us here on the Twyla team, I'm Avery Davidson. Hope to see you right here next week.